Are you serious? Wasn't it Donny Osmond sung the song, Paper Roses, Imitation, like this imitation, copy and anything. Okay, I'm back. I'm Paul Begley. Let's get serious. Get serious. Are you serious? What? We're here in live in Columbus, Indiana. Three-day revival. Last night, big crowd on a Thursday night, October 13, 2011. Powerful singing. I preached the message, the Hosea prophecy, signs of the times. Two saved on high anointing. Great music they have here. And Pastor Terry Branham is uh, a wonderful pastor and man of God. Now, there's been an update quickly. Stephen of Oklahoma updating me quickly. There's been a 2.6 earthquake right there where he lives in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Just keep that in mind for a second because there was a 6.7 quake that hit Papua New Guinea. And a 6.1 earthquake that hit Russia. These things are going on. Of course, this morning already I told you that 500 or more have died in India recently with encephalitis, a pestilence that's just going through the land, spreading like crazy. Also, there's huge floodwaters in Thailand right now. We don't know how many have died there and how many are missing. Also, Guatemala has had a huge flood. We've heard from Gospel Joe who contacted us. And 13 are dead. 130 have been affected. Gospel Joe is okay. He had to run for his life. I see he sent me pictures. If you want to see him, I, I think he probably has them on his website by now at www.gospeljoe.com. He's a missionary in Guatemala preaching the gospel. You might want to bless him. Do that today. And also, but he said he still hung on to his, are you serious, Jesus saves coffee cup down there in the floodwaters of Guatemala. God bless you, Gospel Joe. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we said all that to say this. <clears throat> there is a, a very, very concerning um, on this Occupy Wall Street. I haven't said hardly anything about it. Basically, I believe in freedom of speech. I believe people have a right to voice their opinion. Freedom of assembly. Freedom of expression. Freedom of speech. Um, you know, they, they, this, is, this is good. This is democracy. Uh, this is what our Constitution is all about. It's why our country has been strong up until this point. But these people are... It's a mishmash, not sure exactly who is what in this. I think there's a, several agendas. It's a little different than the Tea Party. The Tea Party was basically rallies. They were rallies. They would organize, they would go there, they'd rally, and then go home. This is an occupation. This is a occupy. This is a set-in. This is a put-in tent city. And it's getting a little disastrous. It's spreading <clears throat> this morning it spread even to London, so uh, London, England now, so it's starting to go global. My concern is if too much chaos, and it's over 100 cities in America right now, but if too much chaos continues on this, protesting against Wall Street, protesting against wealthy investment bankers, protesting against the system, protesting against the government, I, protesting against the Democrats, I think, and protesting against the Republicans, I think. Um, and there's a lot of other agendas. Uh, I heard people chanting down with uh, capitalism. That's crazy. Don't do that. Are you serious? And some people were saying... Uh, Channing, have sex with anybody, have checks with, have sex with animals, stuff like that. You know, I know that's not the heart and soul of most of these people, okay? But there is some confusion. But here's the, here's the key. If there's too much chaos, the danger is if there's too much chaos, the New World Order could kick in as they would then take over the world with control out of chaos, and I'm telling you, Homeland Security is watching this closely. Uh, I'm telling you, FEMA is involved. They're watching it very closely. 
the CIA, the FBI, they want to make sure this thing isn't an unrest to try to become as Ahmadinejad and President Assad of Syria said, this is the American spring. No, I, I'm afraid it's not. But it is an ugly protest that's getting uglier by the minute as the people have a right to do it, but are frustrated at the economic disaster that America's in right now. As a matter of fact, let me read to you. Today, today's planned cleanup of the Zakati Park in lower Manhattan, where the Occupy Wall Street protesters have been camped out for a month. Now think about that a while. Occupy Wall Street protesters went to this Zuccotti Park in lower Manhattan, New York, and they've camped out with tents and makeshift chamois and, 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 and plastic, and, and they've camped out for a month. You can imagine the trash. You can imagine the urine and the, and the feces and the smell and the garbage that's beginning to pile up in this private park private park. Now, as that's happening, they were going to have a, today, they were going to go down there and let's clean the park up. All right, let's got to clean the place up. It's a mess. It's worse than Woodstock. Something's got to be done. I mean, protesting's good, but be careful you don't get yourself caught in a snare in some of these movements. Um, this, the, the key here is they're not going to clean up the park. The Protesters did not want to clean up the park. They want to stay in that. They want to continue to become an eyesore. It's part of how they bring notoriety and and the press and anybody that will cover the story. I have not, I've barely, rarely mentioned because I, I, uh, I, I don't understand it. So I, I, I understand what it means to have the, uh, I understand the inequality of the poor and the rich and how the middle class is being completely squeezed and we're down to almost two class of people, the haves and the have-nots. I understand that. I'm in that have-not crowd. But what you have to be careful is we don't create a sense of urgency or a sense of chaos that can usher in and give the the powers to be the, the reason to set up the new world order. Okay, but anyway, in a dramatic turn of events, when the postponement was announced before dawn, reports uh, by Joel Rose is, the, who was, he was at the scene, he said there was a huge round of applause at that point because it dawned on everyone, well, maybe they're not going to be arrested this morning after all. Because see, what it was, if the park cleanup began, they had made their mind up they weren't going to help clean up the park and they weren't going to leave. And that was going to create mass arrest. And the authorities and even the owner of the park decided, let's not do that today. Cold weather will probably set in and it will begin to dissipate the rally anyway. So it might be cooler heads prevail. So, you know, again, I'm all for freedom of speech, so I'm not condemning these people at all. Um, I'm not jumping in. I'm not going to go get a tent and go down there because of I'm not sure what the cause is. You don't protest just to protest. You don't assemble just to assemble. You need a plan. You need to state what that agenda is. And right now, I think there's a lot of factions and, and different groups uh, coming in from all over that are setting in, and that's okay setting in for their cause. And so we'll see how that all plays out. But uh, that's the Occupy. I would like to see you occupy a church near you. What we need in America is to occupy a church, to occupy an altar, to occupy repentance on our knees. If America would spend its time occupying the house of God, well, there probably wouldn't be a need for occupying Wall Street. You see, America has turned its back on God with its immorality, with its greed, with its corruption, with its abortions. And I'm not picking on people who have had an abortion because most of these young girls were led astray by the horrific leadership of the Planned Parenthood. We need to occupy a church near you. Would you do that today, this Sunday? Give your life to Jesus Christ. Let him occupy your heart. Send me a personal message. You want to be saved. I'll be right back.